I received a lot of feedback and questions after my last video on the Tesla audio system. Some called me out on issues around slacker radio and limitations of the USB audio input. Others asked for a deeper dive into the audio settings and speaker performance. So here's the hotly anticipated sequel, Tesla 2 Audio Boogaloo on the Tesla audio system. One of the things I love about making YouTube videos is the dialogue we have around these videos. Hearing back from you all, whether it's positive feedback or constructive criticism, it's all good. One piece of strong criticism came from Zoix66, now I hope I, <laughs> hope I said your username right, who called me out on some of the slacker information that I presented. Zoix was correct that I did get one key piece of information wrong, which I did confirm after I reached out to slacker for more details. Slacker radio bitrate is controlled solely on the device and not controlled by a central setting, like I had seen reported in a few places. Changing your bitrate on the Slacker website will only affect playback on the computer where you made that change. That leads me to Zoic's second point of contention. There is no definitive answer yet to what bitrate Tesla is setting your Slacker account to after you log in. In my research for my previous video, I was referencing the August version of the Tesla owner's manual, which stated that you can set the bitrate yourself on the Slacker login screen. However, Tesla removed the bitrate checkbox from all Teslas a while ago. This inaccuracy caused a lot of confusion with the Tesla community, myself included. In my follow-up research, I found that Tesla updated the owner's manual on November 12th, which was literally like a couple of days before I filmed my previous video. They actually rewrote a pretty large portion of the internet section of the manual and removed all references to Slacker completely. The fact that they not only removed reference to the higher bitrate Slacker streaming, but to Slacker itself is very interesting. During my testing, which involved logging in and out of Slacker and listening to a wide variety of music, I believe I could perceive a difference, albeit a minor one. I reached out to Tesla customer support as well as their PR department to see if I could get a little more detail and specific information on this. I haven't heard back yet, but as soon as I do, I'll report it back to you all. Bottom line, thanks Zoic66 for pushing me on that and forcing me to dig deeper. The Slacker debate was muddier and murkier than I realized. There was also a Slacker premium feature that I didn't talk about in the last video that might persuade some folks to make the jump, and that's playlists. The core functionality of Slacker Radio is, well, it's radio. It's like a virtual DJ that's using algorithms to make educated guesses as to what you'd like based on what song or artist you created a station with. You don't have control over what comes next, and you can't back up and repeat a song again. When you request a specific song on Slacker using the car's voice control, it will create a station with that song and play that song once within a certain period. I believe it's 24 hours, but it could be less. Ask for that same song again, and it will play something similar, but not that exact same song until the reset time has expired. Well, with Slacker Premium, the service takes a step towards something more like Apple Music or Spotify. You can make your own playlists from individual songs or entire albums, and unlike the default virtual DJ radio station mode, you can listen to a single track over and over again. Now, while you can play your playlists in the Model 3, you can't create playlists or modify them in the car. The only way to create playlists is through the Slacker app or website. If you have playlists, they'll show up at the bottom of the Slacker menu in the car. Play from those playlists and you can scrub through a track, repeat a track, start over, play an entire album that you've added from your phone. However, you can't use the car's voice controls to start a playlist or call up a specific song within a playlist. It will only create a station and start playing like a usual virtual DJ radio station. Playlists must be started from the screen controls. Another quirk is that the brand new playlist can take some time to show up in the car. It can take a few hours for a playlist to show up, which is based on how often your car is refreshing your information from Slacker. If you log out of Slacker and log back in again, you'll see your updated playlist right away. For the nuclear option, <laughs> you could reboot the entire infotainment system by holding the two buttons on the steering wheel, but that's overkill. Tesla could decrease the slacker refresh rate or add something simple like a tiny refresh button to the corner of the UI to address the problem. It's kind of crazy it's only partially supported like this, but it's really nice being able to use playlists at all. Now, if Slacker has the music you like to listen to and you enjoy the virtual DJ style of listening and think those premium features sound nice, not only in your car, but on your phone and your computer, Slacker Radio could be worth taking a look at. If all you care about is higher bit rate in your car, hold off for now. I deliberately left out radio for my previous video for the sake of time and to focus on user controlled and curated methods for music in the car. But based on the numerous questions around the radio in the car, I should have included it and I'm sorry about that. The quick yet unpopular answer is yes, there is an FM radio tuner in the car, but there's no AM radio. I don't see that as a big loss though, since TuneIn is built into the car. 
you should be able to find most AM stations through TuneIn, and the audio quality is going to be as good or better. So why doesn't Tesla support AM radio in the car? Well, there's, there's no AM radio in the Model X either, so this isn't the first time around for Tesla. One of the writers at Sound & Vision magazine wrote an interesting article on why Tesla and BMW, which doesn't have AM in the BMW i3 either, may have killed the AM radio. He wrote, I surmised three reasons for Tesla emitting AM radios. First, the AM radio might seem old-fashioned in a car of the future. Second, there are lots of other interesting options, like the internet. Third, and most important, is noise. Try this sometime. Turn on an AM radio, and then fire up your DeWalt power drill. Whoa. Now, all cars generate electromagnetic interference, and precautions must be taken to mitigate its effect on the radio. Radio interference is a problem in some hybrids, and it's worse in all electric cars. The mitigation must be robust, and apparently Tesla has decided that clean AM reception is no longer worth the effort. I haven't been able to find verification if the Model 3 will support DAB radio in Europe, but I'm guessing that it will based on the support in their other cars. We'll have to wait for the official European rollout, though. Other than giving you the benefit of the lossless audio in the car, I didn't cover too much of the interface and user experience around USB audio. Kid Funkadelic 3 raised the point, the USB interface doesn't remember your place when you exit the car. Album where you were playing does appear in the reasons list, but you can only restart it from the beginning there. To find a different song, you need to skip ahead or search the USB directory again. It's a very good point. Kid Funkadelic, I love saying your username by the way, wasn't the only person to bring up questions around the USB interface. The fact the car doesn't consistently remember where you are in a track or an album between drives is very frustrating. The interface for navigating music is basically a dressed up file explorer, which isn't the best experience. It's serviceable, but that's about it. My overall take on the USB drive user experience is that it feels half-baked. It gets the job done, but it lacks the refinements we all expect out of a car at this price point. Now, all of this is solvable with software updates, so the more people that contact Tesla asking for improvements with USB audio support, the more likely those issues will get resolved. Another question that came up quite a few times in a previous video's comments was around playing audio from your phone over USB instead of Bluetooth, or using USB to aux converters to get support from MP3 players, XM radios, or CD players. Sadly, none of that will work. Only the two USB ports in the front area under the screen accept data input, and even those don't accept audio streams over USB. It's only data from files, which is why it works for Tesla Cam videos and for audio files. Again, this seems like a software-only issue. I don't believe Tesla is limited by the hardware, so it might be possible for Tesla to add USB audio from phones and other sources as a software update. Right now, though, it's a non-starter. I got a lot of requests for my recommended tone and immersive audio settings, as well as questions around the actual frequency performance of the speakers themselves. Saying it sounds amazing, which it does, doesn't help convey the nuances of how the speakers actually perform. Now please take my recommendations as a place to start. These are not a definitive best settings. They are a place to start and tweak to your personal preferences. The style of music I listen to is somewhat eclectic, which influences how I set my tone settings, so I don't have to go in and tweak them depending on what I'm listening to. I like the set it and forget it mentality. It varies from classic rock, like Led Zeppelin to the Beatles, to little classical and movie soundtracks, and a lot of electronic music like Daft Punk, and even harder rock like Nine Inch Nails. I like to feel the kick of bass in my chest, but not so much that it will rattle the windows and turn into a muddy mess of low-end noise. When you push bass too much, it tends to drag down neighboring frequencies with it, and it ruins the overall definition of an audio system. Kick drums and the lowest bass are affected by the first tone slider. The second slider tends to be where male vocals fall, and the third slider is where female vocals tend to fall, going all the way up to the highest frequencies and instruments through the sliders on the right. So for me, I find around a 5, a 5, 3.5, 1.5, and a 1.5 to work pretty well across the styles I listen to. Voices come through crystal clear, the bass has a really nice kick, and the high end isn't too harsh. For immersive audio, I strongly recommend at least using the standard setting. I leave mine on high all the time. When you turn it off, you'll notice that the sound in the car suddenly feels like it's coming from the front, and you can actually tell what speaker is generating what sound. Turning on immersive audio starts to blur the lines between the individual speakers and widens the sound stage. Standard still feels like you're listening to a good stereo system, but feels less like you're listening in a confined car and more like you're sitting in a small room. Turn immersive audio to high, and it doesn't feel like you're listening in a car at all anymore. 
it sometimes sounds like the audio is coming directly from the left and the right of your seat, where there are no speakers at all. Whichever of the active immersive audio settings you choose, it seems clear to me that Tesla intended for this to be used all the time. It's no different than calibrating your home theater audio speakers. Tesla's already done the calibration, all you have to do is turn it on. How strong is up to you. For balance, I like to slide the circle and horizontal line so it looks like it's in the rear foot well. The sound system is very front heavy, so pushing it back slightly helps with the balance. And finally, how do the speakers perform? I ran a series of tone sweeps in the car and used a frequency response app on my iPhone to record the performance. This isn't gonna be as accurate as a dedicated piece of testing hardware, but it's in the ballpark and should give a more objective view of the system. Human hearing is basically 2020, which means it spans from 20 hertz in the low end to 20,000 kilohertz on the high end. The higher in the frequency spectrum you go, the harder it is for the human ear to hear those sounds. That's why lower frequencies sound louder than the highest frequencies at the same volume levels. This test is with all of the tone settings to zero and immersive audio set to standard. This test was with all the tone settings at my recommended levels and the immersive audio settings set to standard. As you can see, the response is fairly flat, but does have a sudden ramp down when you hit around 16,000 to 17,000 kilohertz. This isn't that uncommon in some speaker systems, but it could be a limitation of the iPhone's microphone. And a big thanks to Daw ID or Dawid, excuse me while I butcher your username. He tipped me off to who actually made the sound system for the Tesla Model S and X, which was a company called S1NN, which is a part of Harman and was founded by former Bose employees. It's assumed they probably made the Model 3 as well, but there's no confirmation. One of the nice things about the Tesla Model 3 requiring a smartphone to set up your car when you pick it up for delivery and use it as your key is that every Tesla Model 3 owner should already have at least one phone ready for Bluetooth streaming on the car from day one. If you haven't tried streaming from your phone yet, it's very easy. Just tap the note icon to pull up the music screen and then select phone as your option. If you have multiple phones linked to your car, you can select the one you want to use from that screen. After that, everything is controlled from your phone. So just load up your music service app of choice, whether that's Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, and start playing whatever you want. It should just play straight through the car stereo, whether it's plugged into the dock or it stays in your pocket. That's actually one of the nice things to remember. When you get back into your car, you can usually just pull up the music and phone input screen and hit play, and it will resume whatever you were listening to last on your phone. No need to even pull it out of your pocket. I still stand by my previous video's review of the audio system, but only changed my recommendation around upgrading to Slacker Plus or Premium solely for the purpose of getting a higher bitrate. We're still in the dark on what bitrate Tesla is actually using, but if the other features of Slacker Premium sound interesting to you, then absolutely make the jump. This car sounds fantastic, but is let down only by the limitations around the audio input into the car. The more discerning listeners can load up a USB thumb drive with lossless audio, while the more general audience will most likely get the best experience by playing audio through their phone or Slacker radio. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if this helped to answer your remaining questions. And if you'd like to support the channel and are looking for some great Tesla accessories, it is the holiday season after all, you can get 15% off your first order with Abstract Ocean, which can save you a lot of money on their console wraps, bright LED lights, screen protectors, and much, much more. And if you're looking to buy a Tesla, you can get six months of free supercharging by using my referral code. The link's in the description. The same code also works if you're looking at Tesla Solar, which will give you an extended warranty. And again, and as always, thanks to all of you who have purchased a Tesla with my referral code. I've heard from a bunch of you, and I love hearing what you ended up buying and how the delivery went and what you think of the car. And if you use my referral code, do not hesitate to shoot me any message on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or through my website. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.